Welcome back to another MotoGP Mac podcast with myself, Mac, and Jake. How are you doing, sir? Hunky dory, guy. Hunky dory. Just was just was riding yesterday. Not yet. Haven't went yet today, but I was out riding yesterday. Great ride. Oh, Ran into a bunch of guys, um, and they go, "Yo, Jake." I don't know who the hell it is, right? Jeez, like, this must be from the old days. This might be trouble. And they're, but they're laughing, and they're like, "Hey," and he goes, "Yeah, we saw your podcast." And they're like, I'm like, you know, we follow your podcast. You guys, you guys, they said we we're the most honest guys on the, on the, on the internet for for races. Yeah. He goes, we saw it. And I looked over, I said, and he goes, you know, all these bikes here. He goes, we heard you talk about um, for the last 14 years. Like he must've saw it last year now. And he goes, the Europeans beat the Japanese in every single uh, marathon, right? <laughs> He goes, one guy, one, and then, so we're buying bikes. You know, somebody's always buying a bike, and somebody tried it. You know, tried the Europeans with, and they were always Japanese. And he goes, he bought one. And he comes back, he goes, you know, that guy was right. Then another one, he goes, we all ended up buying, you know, it ended up being second bikes. He says, we all ended up buying European bikes. That's why you don't see any Japanese bikes here. He says, they really did make a step up. Japanese. Except one guy who he says, he's really pissed at you because he won't talk to anybody. He has a K6. He's like, he won't even, he won't even discuss it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, just um, we do have a special guest next week. Yes, that yeah. the world stays right. So, uh, next week's podcast will be a couple of days late. Uh, we'll probably put it out on the Wednesday. And then we have another special guest the following week, some road racing royalty. Um, so, next week is Northwest 200 week. Um, and probably the week that I will actually meet Sleepwalker in the flesh for the first time. Oh, really? I didn't know you. I thought you'd know him. Like, hi, how you doing? What's going on? No, no, he's the other end of the country from me. So, uh, but we talk nearly every day. So, uh, it'll be it'll be good to actually take a picture with with the man at the Northwest. Uh, oh, by the way, the more prayers we sent out to. Um, Rich at Montgomeryville Cycle Center, which is my mechanic and my my dealer, he got mm-hmm. better. I thought he was kicking the bucket. I walk in and he's standing there, I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> you're live!" <laughs> so you're now you now you now call him Jesus, is it? Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> my rose over the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good, very good. Well, look, I suppose a couple of things I want to get to cracking on. Uh, we'll get into the super bikes in a minute. I'll be very honest; I haven't yet seen them been busy with the fam bam and all of that but a couple of things that caught my eye during the past week uh firstly was wayne rainey i don't know have you seen that uh the one where he says that marquez talking about marquez yeah 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 you want to do that one yeah but he says he should change teams <laughs> he should ditch on that <laughs> yeah that was the one over like a lead balloon oh i'd say so yeah 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 but I find it very funny, you know, um, and I'm still, I'm still looking through all the pictures over the course of the weekend from Kota, actually. So I think Mir had a new frame. Not 100%, but I think maybe Mir had Marquez's frame. You think so? I thought he had the somebody. I heard through the vape, grapevine somewhere is that he had the original frame. Yeah. He no, he didn't have the original frame. It was a different frame again. Oh, different. Okay. From from the it looks very like the one Marquez had in Portimao, and that was uh, Rins tried in Argentina, but I can't. It's the opposite side of of the ones that I have. Or sorry, it's the opposite side of the frame that I have. Oh, oh yeah. Here, that I have of Rins and Marquez, so I could I can spot instantly. But it doesn't have the weld up the middle. So the way there's the weld across the frame yes. and it goes up. It doesn't mm-hmm. have that one, which is the original Honda frame. Now Nakagami and Rins had that frame in Argent or in Kota. Huh. I, well, it was it was all it was it, it was all Rins. I mean, if anybody, it, it, unless God comes down and touches the bike on it, you know, and, and rubs the tank of the Honda. I don't think it's gonna. It made a damn bit of difference. Code is such a weird track, you know. It, yeah, Michael Laverty was talking about Rins and Neil Hudgens. 
Um, it was all it was all Ryder. Yeah, it was all Ryder. But, but Neil Hodgins was talking, or Hodginson was talking to Rins, and he actually did uh, a Thursday video feature of a lap of Kota with Rins, right? Yeah. And oh, you see Rins, the Rins, yeah, <laughs> Rins was talking about it though. He was like, "I found something with the Honda that I ride it different from Marquez." Mir and Nakagami, and he's like, I'm able to blend the strong points of an inline four and a uh, V4. So maybe, maybe he is the one that is actually, and like this would coincide, and I think this is why they, they gave Rins the thing, the chassis, is that maybe he's been able to one day able to bridge that gap. Do you know what I mean? Now, I think in that case, ignorance is bliss. If you don't know what's going on underneath you, the things bouncing so much, is the better to not know. Right. Yeah. Listen, look, Coda, Coda, Coda is a luck circuit. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you look at it, we nearly had a 50 percent attrition rate in the race. Right. You know, nowhere, no race normally or no normal race has that unless there's a big accident at the start of the race. You know. Yeah, and, and Honda probably has the only the, the only ones with data of somebody running across bumps at 200 mile an hour. Exactly. From, exactly. from back from Marquez, right? Do you, you, you get my point there? Yeah, I do. Um, so, I, know, I, think it's, I think it's funny then, though, Marquez would be kind of trying to stop people from getting parts. Uh, yeah, well, remember when he did that, he, he's, he's hot on that because that's how he got Pedrosa out. He flat said, that's how he got Pedrosa out. I kept pushing him to get his parts. Mm, yeah, and yeah, people yeah. think subjectively. So he's thinking, hey, you know, he's doing the same thing to me. Mm. True, but it wouldn't surprise me he's mad. I think I think it's funny. Uh, I just still think it's funny that that, that, that he's doing it. The, the shit situation Honda's in, and he's trying to hold up the, the development, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. I, I think he's looking towards the door. Oh yeah, I think I think that's going to be a fast Japanese exit, like you know, or Japanese yeah. exit, you know. That's uh, a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think of Crayfair uh, and his comments about Top Rec? Well, I, I, you know, I always go with Crayfair. Crayfair, I think, is the best, if not the best, you know, analysis, uh, little GP analysis guy out there. So, you know, uh, matter of fact, he said, Cornex, he said he didn't know if I'm, we're going the same lines. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to adapt. Are we talking about, um, you know, his manager just came out today and said, I think it was today, said he'd, he'd rather have him on a swirl super bike now. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually, that will actually be in tomorrow's video, but we can talk a little bit about it today if you want to. Um, right, this guy's all over the place. I, you know, he's not. not like I, 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 I'll be very honest. I, I think a couple of things here. I think, yes, he mentioned in it that uh, the top rack was built for World Superbikes, and not for MotoGP. And I, I, to me, I think that's a complete pile of bullshit, right? Yeah, now, he's built like Schwanz. I went back and I looked at one of the interviews that. Uh, Keenan gave talking about uh, Toprak and when he took him on six years ago and he told him six years ago you'll come live with me in my city you'll do what you're told you'll do this you'll do that you'll do the other so this, this fucker has literally lived in a concentration camp as far as I'm concerned yeah right yeah. and now he's like I like yeah, superbike is, is superbike, but every moto, every road racing moto motorbike person, yes. if they're competitively racing, want to race in the pinnacle. Yeah, and he's like, oh, he's not built for that, and or if he goes there, it will only be a two or three year stint there, and it won't be. And I'm like, oh, and the other thing is, oh, he's what? trained to ride a motor a uh, uh, a road bike, so it's it's different than riding a, a, a Moto Two bike. So you can never switch it over and adapt. Yeah, but I think what kind of shit that is. He seems like he's controlling that kid to the point where he, it's he's just 
fell on his head for shit. Well, there's two things there, right? Firstly, Keenan was absolutely fucking brilliant on a 600. That, right? Yeah, and he's but he still he still right. sounds like a swindler, a swindler to me. He moved to super bikes, did nothing. Did nothing, right? Was just average, right? Mm -hmm. Came back to super sport on the six hundred one again. Moved to Moto Two. Did nothing. Did nothing. So what? There's so that there's that thing that that's inside him is going like, you know, change and this and that and the other. But Top Rack is a little bit different. Like he went through the six hundred, he went through whatever, and he all the way from KTM rookies, he was he was great. He was a great little rider, right? And still is. But he said he blamed that it's only so to go to Moto GP, you realistically need to be always in the Moto GP paddock. Right. Then he was saying, you know, if you go there, it's only two or three years. And he was like, look at James Toesland and look at um, Ben Spees. Mm. And like they had pretty successful careers, actually. Well, maybe yeah. Toesland didn't. But Spees did have a successful career in, yeah. in, in Moto GP, right? In my view, he did throw, he reached the thing, he raced with some of the Especially best. Especially for his guys, he did in, very in, well. In, 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 the, in, the ever, in ever so. And then he was just like, at the end of his interview, he was like, you know, but if he wants to go there, I'll follow him there. Do you know what I mean? It's right that you need to trace, chase your dreams and all of this. Now, I but still he, go on back the other to, side of the coin, though. He's bad mouth, and I'm saying, listen, he didn't do he didn't do very well at the at the test, and this proves that he's not going to do well. Well, that was Crafer. Crafer said that. No, his he manager was, said that also. No, though. he just said he wasn't happy with his seating positions, and he'd need another test yeah. to, to to go. I know that's that's fine, but like. I think that's just a bit of PR spin because the lap times weren't there. Do you know what I mean? So you kind sounded of like you're saying his lap times were shitty. So therefore, yeah, he's not he, he just said he wasn't comfortable. So yeah, like for me, like you'd expect that from your from from your manager. But I still think the biggest problem here is Red Bull. You still think there's a the clash of the? I would think they'd be able to get around that for somebody. He's. He's like the only shooting star, though, if you think about it right now. He has a lot of PR value. Exactly. He is the only shooting star. Like, put it this way. If he goes to Monster Energy Yamaha, right? Right. He can't go to any of these Red Bull events, can't go and support him. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he can, but, like, he... You know, there'd be there'd be a little bit of I would think friction just there between brands and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I'd be, I'd, right. But Keenan Safwaglu's whole Turkish academy is Red Bull backed. Yeah, yeah. Right, and the shining star of their Red Bull academy <coughs> is now is sponsored by Master Energy. Yeah, Master Energy. Just fucking, I can't see it happening without. Top rack splitting from Keenan. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing for him. But saying that, Keenan probably has him tied up for fucking years. Oh, you so, know those contracts. You can split those contracts up, and all, especially now. Yeah. Not, not a fucking Turkish one. Know that you took him from no ride in the gutter to a world champion, Jody. That's gonna cast you, Jody. Yeah, I, so, so. I think you get out of it. I think he'll get out of it, but it will Yamaha pay if to get him out of it is the question. Now, yeah. He has lost his luster that lately too. Top rank. He has, yeah, 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 yeah. Well look I don't know why, but he's not for some reason he seems to be like he's doing he pa he used to pass all over the place. Like like a, like a Johnny Ray, right? Mm -hmm. And now he seems like he's just passing, he's outbreaking somebody in the long straight. Yeah. He's saying that my balls are bigger than your your balls, your team. Yeah. And I, I don't see the creativity. Let's call it. Uh, the, the yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Well, maybe look. Maybe it's just the racing. The racing has changed, I suppose, for him. But there is no doubt that all this top rack attention at the moment is giving one person a lot of pressure. 
and that's Franco Morbidelli. Oh yeah. He's saying he's saying, Oh, I would I would uh, I like the pressure. I I I jump uh, it's great, it's not a, it's not I'm not concerned about what's gonna go happen with top rack or whatever, I'm just focused on my own stuff. And like that's grand spin, but I think it was very public kind of pressure. Do you know what I mean? Little yeah. bit like the but, but, in, but in Morbidelli's case, I think he's gonna go either way. Whether top rack's good, bad or indifferent, Morbidelli on his own merit is gonna be out the door. Mm. If he stays but, the way he's staying, I mean, unless he has some turnaround. But then there's the other side of it. What about Martin? Yeah. Yeah. You could have Martin come in there. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of talk about Morbidelli and Toprek. Martin was still talks are underway there as well. Like, they're not going to ditch <laughs> Fabio for. For, that's for sure. As a matter so, of fact, you're telling Martini better to light a uh, light a candle under his ass and get moving. Did mm -hmm. you see that? He better start making a decision where he wants to go. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah. So well, there, yeah, there must be there must be talks underway. Yeah, because what Jarvis said about Morbidelli is that the, the decision would be made before summer. All right, so kind of gives him a good few things, but um. And Tafu Waglu's manager said everything will be wrapped up by Barcelona. Um, so look, I don't know, like Martin, I think he would be very fast in the Yamaha, but I'm just not sure he's, um, just not sure he's good enough for Yamaha right now. Do you know what I mean? Like the results aren't there. He's on. Yeah, but who else? Who else is better? It's available. Who's available? Well, look, I don't think there's many available, is there? No. Isn't it next? The end of next year is. The end is... of next year. Mm. So that's kind of at least their 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 choice is short. It's short. You know what this year is? Like more and more, I'm going to have a revelation here. I had a revelation. That, that Cordero, and I know he's my favorite rider, okay? So I have some bias in there. One time mm -hmm. I do have bias. That this seems to be, the MotoGP this year is more about rely, reliability and, and you know, con, con, <clears throat> being consistent than anything else. It looks like it's, it's going to be more and more about being consistent than fast. You know what that? It is. Yeah, it is about being more consistent than fast. And, and Cordero, the one thing is, is very consistent. Can't say anything in that. I mean, he yeah, he, hit, he fell a couple times last summer, you know, last season. But that was because he's riding 110, percent which he's yes, he's doing it again. But he did pretty damn well, I think, last year for riding 110. percent He did, but sure look, I think it's always been the way in MotoGP. What? In, well, it did, but now it right? upped the game. Now, now it upped the game for being consistent. Look at look at Joan Joan Mir, sir, 2020. Won one race, won the championship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it is about being consistent. And yeah, I just think, um, I think it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit of a pickle actually for Yamaha because, like, who do you sign? Like, oh, Jorge Martin is very fast, but he's yeah. unreliable on the bike and he likes to spit his dummy loads so you know what I mean so difficult mm -hmm. to manage um top wreck a little bit off the pace will need time to adjust but is very much so um how would you say company man keeps yeah. throw so I don't know more deadly you know I don't think it can continue if I'm very No, honest. I was gonna say he's a, he's a, he's dead in the water. Mark yeah, my words. Yeah, and yeah, where will he go? It will be very, very interesting. Yes, and the other seat that's gonna be open is Zarco because he's just not performing. As nice as he is, he's just not performing well enough to have a factory seat. Yeah, I think so. I, I think you're right there. I, I but I think like Ducati are definitely after Basecki. 100% they'll get him to. Yeah, yeah. And all space for him, so now they'll get him. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is about your man Vegas saying that Suzuki could be back. Uh, well, I think that's pipe dreams. They're, they're so damn broke. They, they just went bankrupt, for God's sake, for the second time in 10 years. Are they bankrupt again? Yes. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're government supported. Lovely. Lovely, Lovely yes. <laughs> Kawasaki can afford it. You know, they're the big, the yeah, big they, money players they, in there. But they, they won't have no interest. In. Right. Absolutely zero interest in it. Um, it was surprising, though. You know, when they talk about buy on Monday, sell, or uh, win on Sunday, sell on Monday, after when Suzuki left, mm -hmm. right, their sales dropped 30%. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, this, uh, is after, this is after, and I'm not talking about the sport bike sales going, the Japanese sport bike sales going down. Um, I'm talking about the uh, just after that, taken, uh, that's already taken in consideration. By the way, the European sport bike sales are going up every year. They're, that's where they're they're, they're they're taking it away from. Remember, they're they're doing great on the on the. On their, uh, yeah, and and I think that that was along the lines that Viegas was saying is that you know. <laughs> You can kind of sell things if you're not in competition. Yes. Um, so, so that's why he's saying that he thinks that they will they will come back. Um, but it's kind of weird, I think, that how BMW and Kawasaki have no interest. Just find it. You know. Well, BMW. Right. Don't forget that they already they had they had the cars. Okay, so. Yeah, you know, they're more or less a car. They're they're more of a car company, right? Yeah. Um, and Kawasaki made but motors. They, 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 but one second, before we go on to Kawasaki, they are cars, and I will give you that, right? Mm -hmm. But they're premium brand cars. Yes. Yes. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? So, I would put the bikes that they make. I would put those into the same sort of premium brand as Ducati. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not a Honda. It's not a Yamaha. Yes. Yeah, we're not it's making scooters. Exactly. It's a premium brand. So that's why I'm kind of surprised they're not in the showcase yeah. um, category, let's just call it. You know what I mean? I'm surprised on that myself because that would go a long way for the, the even the BMW car enthusiast. It would. Like, it would be, it's a big thing. So, like, for me, it, it's it's where where I thought that they would have it. Now saying that, BMW have practically built a prototype <laughs> for World Superbikes. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know you can buy it, but it's practically a prototype bike. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but Kawasaki, then, yeah, they have the money. Um, they were there. Just think they don't like Dorna. <laughs> no, no, no. That's like a Prilia, just not like Dorna. Yeah, because yeah. they Dorna pushed them right out. Yeah, you know they were like, "Oh, you can't win. Push you out. You don't give us any money." They're only really hmm. brought it down to. Yeah, and look, I think, I think, I think a couple of things is that it's like, yeah, they did absolutely. I think, being very honest, that time if when. When they were leaving, didn't they didn't they make them run a team for two years? The last two years of their contract. <laughs> oh, uh, Aprilia? No, uh, Kawasaki. Yes, was it Milan was yes. Melandri on some fucking yep. Hayate or something. Yes, yes. So <laughs> yeah, and the and the aftermarket the uh, this the the. Satellite team did better than the factory team. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, but that was why they left. And then after that, they forced them to run the Swayate yeah. team. Which is like... Yeah, the Hayate team did better than their their, their, their official factory team. Hmm. It's kind of weird, though. Um, you know, it would be great for fans... To have uh, to have everyone there, but I suppose you know some some brands are not into it. And like if you look at like uh, 
realistically, I know Dorna have kind of, I'll call it censored them in 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 um, World Superbikes, but they need they need to give their riders new packages. Like, do you know what I mean? The Kawasaki, even the Yamaha needs to fucking cop on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, they, they just said we're going back to for if you're talking about they need to get rid of that uh rev limiter crap, get their fingers yeah. out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think they definitely need to they definitely need to do something anyway, um, to get it going because it's it's not good. No, I mean, the, the today's t- the race this this weekend's race is a world superbike. My god, it. it, it Poor Jonathan Ray, which is running his, he was giving it 120 percent, and he just couldn't catch up. It was just you could just see the poor guy throwing everything he had at it, and it just wasn't going. To, you know, he was he he went to the, he went up the lead once, okay, for a short period of time, and that was it. Did he? Right. Yeah. And that was, and then Bautista passed him. This is in race two, and and then. Uh, uh, Razi Lagu, he made it um, top rank, came up and passed <laughs> Bautista for a second, and he seemed like toying with him. He wasn't, he was just laying back, okay, I'll, I'll you know, I'll just wait on you. Passes him again, you know, uh, put a little distance on him, and it was all, it was all over. You know, the, the, they got something where the Ducati's turning better, and that was what they needed. It still yeah. doesn't turn as well as the traditional chassis. The, the the twin spar chassis that that um, semi monoque chassis that they made so they could sell but, bikes but it doesn't need to it doesn't yeah. need to do you know what i mean they they've got it to a state of where it's good enough um, yes and look they'll keep refining that you know until until they get it like and you could see i mean i know this sounds very weird right but you could see even that even trans like the correlation between the Ducati road bikes handling and the Ducati Moto GP bikes handling. Like if you look at it, like both bikes, the Moto GP bike and the World Superbike are absolute fucking rockets down the street. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. In the corners, they both suffer a small bit so on the not the, not the Moto GP bike. The Moto GP does. bike. They, they were aiming for the long swinging, the long arcing corners, which um, they are always better at the long arcing corners yeah, because the D four. You could see it now last week, and you could see it. You could see it the other weeks. Um, you could see in sector one and two, for example, which is what I would class as the tight and twisty bits. Do you know what I mean? The real twisty bits, like the flip flops, mm-hmm. brigades, and this, that, and the other. Rins was fucking eating him. Every lap. Well, Rins, that, that's Cody. You can't even. I know that. But it is like it apples is, and oranges. But it is, look at it the is. race before that, right? But Argentina, you know? yeah. Argentina, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was still the same in Argentina. But what's his name? Okay, it was, no, it was the Secchi was ahead of him. But Peco rides different lines to the other Ducati riders. Right. If you ever watch it, like Peco arcs the corners rather than V's the corners. And if you watch now, especially in Portugal, you saw it. And that tells me that he can't get the bike to turn in as sharp as he wants to. So yeah. he, what he's doing is he's carrying that corner speed. Well, that could be him, um, too. That's you know, what it is. Everyone says that the Ducati is the best handling bike in, in MotoGP now. It, it is the, the fastest. So what are you going to yeah, do? But it, they but got Ducati, it down. Ducatis were always fast down the straight and had trouble in the, in the corners. No, right. they and the, and the, and the tight Not as well as a Yamaha. Huh? The, in the tight slow corners, they were always good on an arcing. They were always yeah, fast. Yeah, but even, even if, you look at, if you look at Peco's lines now, mm-hmm. even in slow corners, they're not Vs. They're all arcs is what he's doing. So he's converted it over mm-hmm. to a, an inline four riding style. Right. On that V4, right? But if you look at even... Like the Honda and what, and even the Yamahas, the Honda. Okay, Honda. That's a bad example. The Honda <laughs> and, and 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 the Aprilia in the look middle. At, yeah, look at the Aprilia. Will make turn, it no problem. Huh? Much better than the Ducati. If you look at the Ducati World Superbike, 
it has the same DNA running through it. It's a bullet down the straight. It's a little bit more difficult to get the fucking thing turned in the corner. You can get it turned. Like, you look at Bautista when he's riding. He's turning that with the rear end of the bike. Right. 80% of the time. But, that's but they're it's totally it's... different chassis, though. The the monocoque, ch that monocoque chassis is not... I know it's totally different, but the DNA yeah. of the bike is still the same. So something is coming down through. Right. Through that. And I, and I can guarantee I can guarantee you... Besides the horsepower and the brakes, I would say the feeling would be somewhat similar, but slower on the World Superbike. Yeah, I'm just that... saying, like, if you ask Crayfar or whatever, they're all saying that the, the Ducati is the best handling bike in MotoGP right now. It's the best handling. doesn't mean the best turning. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, one's, it's one synonymous for the other. Uh... Look at Peck when he says it's stable, but you can't feel it. Do you know well, that, that's just nuts. I, I that really worries me. That you know, I think he's done. If he that's he's if he's that confused, he's done. I think he's very confused at the moment, the poor fucker. Yeah, I, I, he can't figure that out. He it's, his season's over. Yeah, yeah, but look, he was he was wide. Like I don't care what anyone says. He looked offline to me. He looked too hot to me, but, but yeah, it was going in too hot. Well. I told you, remember when I first said it was just all of a sudden he's had three bike lengths, you know, ahead. He jumped three bike lengths. It's like, you know, he was pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was. He was. He wasn't controlling the race. The race was on, is my opinion, in that. Um, Aprilia, some strange stuff happening in Aprilia. I know. Did you, did, you, did you read about that? No, because I've been riding. Okay, uh, Alex, El Capitan, uh, Spagro is very unhappy, obviously. Um, the first few corners of the race, right height device, rear right height device was stuck down. I saw that. I did see that. What is with them? And it's it, 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 it's only a Papilla having this problem. Mm -hmm. it, it, they've had a lot of stupid problems like switches. And remember the going through the um, – they had the, the – pit limiter switch bad somebody turn it off in the in the in the oh yeah but that was that was last year but they, this year it affected raul fernandez as well also in cota so they made a change to the right height system from 22 to 23 mm -hmm. and it's unreliable what alex was saying as well that like the past few races or first few races like there's silly mistakes creeping in there again and Basically, he was saying, you know, Aprilia are not in control of, of bike issues. It took two of us out at Kurt, or at Kota. So, I don't know, man. Like, it's it's very, very, very... It's uh, odd. It's, it's like niggling problems. It's, yeah, it's, it's these not... stupid ones, yeah. Yes. Like, uh, stupid problems that are... That are uh, creeping in there. Yeah, I thought by this year, I, it, it, last year they had the problem, like they had the, the 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 switch was wired wrong. I mean, you have a multi-million dollar bike and the switch is wired wrong. You know, somebody should be on the pulling under the rug for that one. Uh, but I expected that to be gone by this year. I thought that too, and I, like I was very surprised to to, to read um, what he was saying because I was one hundred percent in the same kind of category there. With, Last year, a little bit of, I would say, rookiness from the team in in fighting for a championship. Yeah. Fed into Alex not being there at the last round to, to try and battle for it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it seems that they've started it off as they've continued the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, so I was like... They need to figure that out because, you know, I hate giving, I hate riders using the bike or mechanicals from a bike as, as, uh, what you say? Um, and, 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 and it's not like a pro, a pro you have premium strong engineers. It's almost like, well, okay, we're figuring out the big stuff. We got this, the queen that is not, maybe not as good as the Ducati, but we're second in a close second. But then we drop the ball when we have valve caps, you know what I mean? They need to be put on. And exactly. like, oh, anybody can do that. And they just 
you know, neglected. Now, saying that, um, the incident between um, Alex Marquez and Martin in, in, in the second race, you know, I, I personally think they really need to look at the tracks. I know yeah. there's a big thing going on at the moment now about the gravel, as in the size of the gravel shape. Right. It has to be all... And I get it, you know, fine, but like... That rule's been around a while, too. Huh? That rule's been along, around a while. It has, yeah, but they're really getting strict and enforcing it. But if anyone hasn't seen um, Alex Marquez and um, Martin's crash, the bike hit the barrier with Alex Marquez on one of the bikes. I think it was, he was on, on top of his own bike. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or under it slightly and if you look at Peko's crash Peko's bike also hit the barrier yeah because of the stupid fucking tarmac the tarmac they skids across the tarmac it skids Ricochet. across the tarmac it actually it's like it actually picks up speed I don't know if you ever <laughs> fell off like that but it's like it picks up speed because the tarmac on the track is one grade Right, and the tarmac in the runoff area is in a separate grade according to FIA yes. regulations, right? So it's a more uh, a finer guess, grade, isn't it? Huh? It's a finer grade, if I'm no, not mistaken. No, it's a heavier grade, the heavier grade? more coarse grade, grade, so that okay. if a Formula One car or a, a car goes off, it will even it will be higher grip to stop that car hitting the barrier. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? So when the mm -hmm. wheels are or tires are but if you're on a motorbike and you fall and you go from one surface to another surface that's high grip, first of all it's gonna burn through your letters and you're gonna have a fucking hot ass, yes. right? And secondly, you know, the bike is not going to slow down because the bike the bike's sides are at the side of the bike is carbon fiber. Right. So, like, why do they put the pucks on your shoulders, your jaws, you mean your yeah. knees and your elbows? Right. They're the high, they're the high wear areas, but they're also mm -hmm. the areas that you don't want to dig in. So the bike is just skeeting along the thing. It's not really slowing down, and then it goes into a gravel trap that's ten foot wide <laughs> rather than yeah. forty foot wide, and of course right. it's hitting the barrier. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just looking at it, and I'm just going. You know, yeah. someone is going to get fucking hurt. Like someone's going to get trapped under the bike, and brought into the fence. And like, look at like Paul's incident in in thing. That's a warning. Do you know what yeah. Bikes shouldn't hit the barriers. Right. End of. Yes. And I don't know. Not a lot of people are talking about it at the moment. Um. Mm -hmm. You know, but something has to be fucking done there. Like Jokoda is a very fast track. Yeah, like you, you saw. Did, did you see Pecco's letters after he crashed? Like that wasn't a very major crash, but his letters right. were they were almost open. done. They were almost done. They, they were the almost letters were open. The burst yeah. open. You know, and I'm like going, is that from the airbag or is that from the crash? What way is it? You know. Yeah, and with forty feet, if that was all gravel, he would have plenty to stop. No, it would have been a whole different area, the whole yeah. different situation. And I will accept. I will accept the other side of the course or the coil with gravel. That the riders dig in and they tend to roll, right? And bikes dig in and they tend to roll. But fuck it, I I would prefer to roll <laughs> than hit the fucking barrier at one hundred and twenty mile an hour. Yeah, yeah. We all remember, and we all remember. Uh, Nicky Hayden, rest in peace. But yeah, that time in Aragon. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> do, you, do you remember when he when he hit the barrier head on and flew over the barrier? Yeah. Now yes. look, it was at stupid speed, right? But no, no, like it wasn't wasn't a hundred miles an hour. It was like twenty or thirty miles. Yeah, just say it wasn't very. It's like there was like thirty five mile an hour or some stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like but could you imagine, if, like, imagine yeah. if that was a hundred miles an hour? How far would he have flown? Oh, he'd have made it over the fences. He'd yeah, have made it over exactly. the fence the other side. And actually, there was a, a big thing on because there was an FIM, I think, GT4 race 
like the race that um, Valentino takes part in. <laughs> on in Portimao, and they were testing on the Thursday, and a car coming through Porto Joe so turn one in Portimao is like the yeah. ninety degree right, and 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 turn two is that little kink. But he lost the back of the car. The car went across the gravel, hit the barrier, and landed in the fucking grandstand. <laughs> In the grandstand. Now, there was no people there, but there was a picture on it, and it, it was kind of like a question mark, like, uh, how are we going to get this out of here? Yeah. So, like, if a car can land in the grandstand there, a bike can definitely fucking make it. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah, you get more air. So, look, I'm not being a health and safety expert or preacher, but I don't like seeing riders hitting barriers. Joe, and I don't definitely don't want that to, to happen. We the show. Look at Paul Spagro there. He, he had to get teeth out and everything now for, to, to fucking to replace his or for in his jaw. And it's looking at nice. now that it's not going to be till mid to late August before he's actually well enough to come back. Yeah. What do you think of uh, Miller's um, crash fest at Cota? It just seemed like a bad day. I it, it's every coda. I just I think coda should just be cut off, push out in the ocean, and sunk. Really, you, you can't take a damn thing out of coda. I, I mean, it, it's a motocross track with 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 pavement on it. it you can't take a damn thing out of it. it it's it's a waste of a waste of a good a good race weekend. You, you know, you didn't have, nobody has a setup for it. He was bouncing around and he fell off what, five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look, I'm pretty. You would have uh, put like, you know, rubber rubber tires on the side of you like a tugboat from bouncing up so you don't bounce onto the ground too hard. Yeah, I, to be fair now, I'm pretty excited about Hareth next weekend. Oh, Hareth is great. I think, I think this is where we're really going to see. Who's got what? Yeah, like, I'm, when, I really, think at, that, I really don't. I really think that that um, would, even if it's going to Hareth, if 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 um, if Pecco doesn't get out of this slump of this, I don't know what's you know no no feel. It's going to screw his whole season up. No, there, no matter if it's way way he's talking, it doesn't make a difference if it's a good track or a bad track. If you don't know what, what the bike's doing underneath you, how do you ride? Exactly, and I like. I, I think I think probably what's the most worrying thing for me was is that he didn't realize that he was offline. Rin said he was offline also, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't realize at that time of crashing I was offline. And that worries me is that when a rider who is supposed to be fairly consistent doesn't yeah. realize it. Now, he, in my view, he needs to come out at Hareth and dominate. Just fucking dominate. Don't worry about anything else. Just destroy people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, the non-Sesco, he... I don't have anything to lose kind of thing. Like he did last time. Like you called it last year. Remember? Mm -hmm. When everybody said it had him written off, you said, you know what? I think he has nothing to lose. He's going to, you know, he's going to dominate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I he believe, did. and I believe, I believe he can do that too. But I think the other, the other thing, um, and the scary thing about that is, I think, Quadraro's worst grid slot in MotoGP in Jerez was? I don't know. By, I was going to say, it's, it's up there. He, I was going to say third, but I uh... Yeah. And the shoot down, the straight down the thing isn't long. So we could see a Yamaha surprise, you know? I think we will. I think he's going to just keep plugging away and plugging away and plugging away. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. It's going to be like uh, Mir in 2020. He's just going to keep plugging away, making numbers, and, and end up being you know at the top again. I could see him winning the title if Pecco doesn't pick up the, 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 the keeps this, you know, yeah, uh, no streak going on. I do think it's going to be pretty interesting with the beast coming back as well because I, I I genuinely have a feeling genuinely have a feeling about the beast will start turning up the pressure on Peko 
Of course. Yeah. And then there's Baseki. And I think I was originally thinking that Baseki would be kind of told to shut up and sit down. <laughs> to to, to yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. You you've had too much to drink now. So, so, but uh, I really now have a have a thing that Baseki realizes that it, he could be on a Yamaha next year. Bezeki? Nah. Yeah. I think well, he has. I think he's 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 in he's in Ducati. He's happy in Ducati, and he's aiming for Ducati. And, and Ducati wants him. Yeah, VR forty six on him. So yeah, how long? So, yeah, but that's what I. Oh, they have him for two or three years. Two years, I think. So they, they, isn't this his last year? No, I think it's twenty four. The end of twenty four. Okay. So but the contract's still good till twenty four. Yeah. With the Yamaha, with the Ducati. No, with VR forty six. The riders thing and and, and no, VR forty six also have Ducatis to the end of twenty four. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah. However, Vegas stated. You know, so let's let's wait and see because th this is that's the most interesting trigger point for myself. It, 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 really, what I'm looking at is what will happen with Baseki because he'll be a linchpin to an awful lot of stuff that happens. Uh, I think I think Baseki will want to go to Ducati. He's I, young. It, it's going to be real hard to to, to uh, for when they're young like that. It's going to be hard. He sees everything right as it is. What I have in hand, the kid doesn't see. What can be? He no, is he, he, he's what you call he's what you call a child. They have no filter. He yeah. calls it how he sees it. How many times did you ever hear two best friends fighting at five year olds and like I hate you? I'm never talking to you again because that's how yeah. I feel right there, right then. Do you know what I mean? And look, that that's the way he is. And I think, if I'm honest, Ducati will do everything in their power to get him because he is the next up in my view. He's the next up and coming. Yep, star. You also have to remember that Bastanini is also on a one-year deal. You know that? No, I thought Bastanini was on a two-year deal. He has a one-year deal in the factory. Okay. So that could um, that could all change. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I just I just find it very interesting. Um, I think he's one-year deal in the factory, but I think he has a two. Is it two years? I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and check it because I remember. I thought Bastini had a two-year deal. I remember sure. Chabatti said that their the, their contracts are the exact same. Yeah, I, I'm so much positive this Bastini hey, is two-year deal. Whatever. So, yeah, I must I must I must root that out whether it whether it was a one-year or two-year deal for Bastini because it does make like it would make sense if it's two years. Um, but sure, look. Um, We'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, so, Haret on the weekend. We have a special guest after Haret. We also have the test after Haret as well. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, that's right. it'd be interesting to see what comes out then. Dun, 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 dun. And, and, no, and, no, uh, and no, what happened to the Calix deal? That's, we're not hearing anything about that again. I have a very funny, stupid, yeah, probably very stupid um, hypothesis on this. Hey, with the Calex deal, it's all up in the air. I mean, it's been back asswards since it, you know, it hasn't made sense since day one. Is that special set chassis that Marquez is using, is that the Calex? <laughs> Well, I hope not because it didn't do very damn well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was one of the thoughts. Like, is that why he was making such fuss out of stop using my parts? Yeah. But I don't think, I would think Callus would do better. Unless, it, like, I'm back to square one where they, they handed Callus a chassis and said, make it work. 
I don't know. I think, I think it's. There's so much stuff going on there. I think I don't even think. Joe, something I actually understand why Honda are so confused. The uh, because if we're half a con- confused about something that we're like, okay, then, yeah, I I can understand it. So. Um. Yeah. So I suppose, usual thing. Who's gonna do it on the ref? Who's who's your Friday or who's your Saturday man and Sunday man for the look? We we Joe, you know what would be nice this week? Who was your fastest man on Friday? Who's my fastest? Oh God, they, I'll 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 go Pecco again because one thing he is is fast. Okay. I'll go Quadraro. Oh, you dog! I was gonna, yeah, but I was, I was gonna go, I was gonna go Quadraro on, um, on the, on the sprint and the, um, and and second in the, uh, in the main. So you're going Quadraro for the, the race on the sprint race. Yeah. And second, okay. I take, I, I'll go the opposite to you, so. With Pecco. A good Pecco? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we should we wait and see. Look, he, he definitely needs to to come back in a way Pecco does. Um and he needs to make it make it right. Make it right for himself, I suppose, and start getting his championship underway. And I wanna uh, take I wanna take Bastianini for the for the um uh, I wanna take Bastianini for the main. Oh yeah. I, don't yeah, think I'm just gonna, I just feel like going out. I'm, it's been such a screw year. I'm going to go out there. I'm just going to throw the, you know, I mean, I'm just going to throw all the dice. Yeah, no worries. Then say Bastianini, then Quattro second, and, and Pecco third. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, look, we'll wait and see. And uh, just to remind everyone, we will be late with next week's podcast. <laughs> uh, or we might do a mini podcast on Monday and do the main podcast on. That might be an idea, Jake. We'll do a mini podcast on Monday and we'll do yes. a main podcast on the Wednesday then. Radio, because I do want to talk about the race after the race. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Radio, well, look, that's it for me this week. Thank you again, Jake, for your time. And uh, we'll see everybody again next week. Take care, folks.